This instructional video, led by Professor Bruce Strebler, is designed to help prospective students apply for the PhD program in Purdue University's School of Engineering Education. This edited version was pre-recorded at an open house event in October 2015. This again is entitled The Application Process and Beyond. It talks about the application in um, fairly much depth and then gives you a sense of if you are going to be applying this year, what the timeline what be, would be like and what to in, uh, expect. Some basic questions, again, we want to be sure that people know. We only have admission once a year, which is in every fall. So this is coming up for fall 2016 and the application deadline for that is the 15th. That is the time which you have to have what you're responsible for in the system. Um, you might still be waiting on letters of recommendation or other types of things that are beyond your control and that's fine. The program is only for the PhD program. Um, we do not have a, a master's program at this point that people are admitted into. The program is designed to be residential in that it is, there's not really an online component to it. Um, and it is housed within the College of Engineering and so we expect people to be able to um, do graduate level work at in engineering. The things that are needed in the application, there's a cover sheet and in the cover sheet there are place, there is a place to put who you're interested in working with. Um, it is to your benefit to have some ideas there. It is not um, a requirement that you have ideas there and it is not binding. So don't worry that you're selling your life away if you decide later that there's someone that you want to work with that you didn't list. But it gives us a sense of who is on the top of your list right now. What is very, 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 very important in the application are your essays. We look at them very closely. They're the way where you get to most tell your story. They're, some of the essays are about your career goals, your research statement, your teaching statement. There is also an essay for a fellowship application. If you are eligible, you need to fill that out to be um, considered for one particular fellowship. Not all, but there's one that Purdue um, provides that's a nice fellowship that is, uh, requires the essay. The application um, needs to be that you are, there's two requirements for that, uh, to be considered for that uh, fellowship. One, you need to have um, graduated from a high school in the United States and that you have filled out the application, the, the essay. There are also, you need letters of recommendation and we look at those, again, very carefully. Your letters should speak to your ability, your potential to be a successful PhD student in engineering education. So think about the people that know you well enough to be able to discuss that. Then there's your resume or CV, your transcripts, and your test scores. One thing this year, they have switched platforms for applications and you can now upload a copy of your uh, transcript directly in the application. And we will need a copy of your original transcript sent before your second semester at Purdue. A little bit about how the admission process works. First, your application is reviewed by the graduate committee. Um, of the School of Engineering Education. It is also reviewed by the whole faculty. And then we make a recommendation to the graduate school. It's reviewed again by the graduate school and they are the people that send your official admission. We will let you know when the recommendation has been made. We will email you that. And then you know it's just uh, it depends how backed up they are at the grad school, how quickly you get the admission notice from us. The funding decision is a separate decision. So first you'll get an admission decision and then information about funding. With regards to the timelines, the decisions start to be made in February and go through April.
we try and try and try to make them as early as possible and we'll see how good we get with that. But um, you won't, ex don't expect anything before February from us. Some things about your application essay. Um, as I said, they're really important. So write them thoughtfully and carefully and correctly. This program requires people to do a lot of writing and a lot of reading. And one of the things that we use to um, judge your ability to be successful in the program is how well you write your essay. So it doesn't mean you have to be a poetry PhD. Um, but if there were grammatical mistakes or typos or that type of thing, that would not reflect well on you. So be sure to have people read them because after a while, you know, you can't catch your own mistakes. Really important, of course, is not just that your grammar is correct, but that you're telling your story and you're answering the question, why is this a good place for you? and why would you be successful here? So talking about your own, both your past experience and your future goals and how that relates to what a PhD might do for you um, is important. Just like any kind of application process that you've done before, you know, the first thing a prospective employer will ask you is, why should you work here? What's this going to do for you? How are you a good fit? It's very similar here as well. This is a research PhD. Um, so it is important to have a sense of the kind of research you might want to do and what kind of research the faculty here do and how that might fit. So please learn about the research that faculty do and contact the people that you're interested in. Hopefully today you've had a chance to begin to make contact with people, but it is totally fine to follow up. It's recommended you follow up. Um, it's also, I think, not only okay, but advised, see who else is in that research group and talk to the students that are currently in that research group. Every research group has a different culture and you want to find a place where you're going to fit well. So get a sense of what's their work style like, who else is there. Is this a place you could hang out and thrive and be with people you'd like to be with? So it's fine to do that. You'll find our website should tell you about um, who is advised by whom. And you could also ask the faculty themselves, who are your students, can I contact them? Now to the big one, types of funding. Um, most of our students have research assistantships and these will be with specific faculty members. We have asked the faculty to provide uh, some information about the current projects that they um, have funded and the positions that are open. Um, we have a few card copies here you could look at. You can ask us to send that to you and you can get a sense of that. That is not meant to um, have you think that that is the only possible project you could work on because it's not, but it gives you a sense of the kinds of things that are open. There are a lot of openings now. There is abundant funding now. Some students also have teaching assistantships some with the first year engineering program. Um, as you may know, our first year engineering program is huge here. We have about 2,000 students a year go through that. There are lots of sections of it, about 20. There's lots of TAs. And so some of our students uh, do that. Some TA for other courses, usually in engineering, but not always, so I put this in parentheses. There are also fellowships available. I have um, listed in italics something called the Exploration Fellowship, which is the type of funding that most of our first year students have, first year PhD students have. And this is a fellowship where you work with uh, projects in first year engineering, not being a TA for it, but working with research projects 
in a small group of students in your cohort and it is funded by the department and gives you time to find the research group that you want to be in. So even though we're um, recommending that you have a sense of these are faculty I might want to work with, you still have time to confirm that. So the Exploration fellow, it, Fellowship is what, what most of the beginning cohort would have. There are also a couple from Purdue that are commonly uh, given to our students as well. One is the Ross Fellowship. And then the Purdue Doctoral Fellowship is the one that has the um, essay that I spoke about earlier. There are fellowships outside of Purdue. Um, Fulbright is one that perhaps you have heard of. It's for international students. We've had several students receive a Fulbright um, to come to uh, Purdue for the engineering education PhD. We have people who are funded by their country, their employer, their institution. Um, it is not uncommon for um, an employer to say, uh, an educational institution to say, we would like you to come and get a PhD, we will help you uh, with the finances for that and the expectation as you come back with that PhD. Currently, and I don't expect to see this in the incoming class or in the near future, everyone who can have funding has it. So a big question I know people always have is, is there funding? Yes, there's funding. Another thing is what are the attributes of successful <coughs> applicants? Our program is very interesting, obviously, that it combines technical expertise in engineering or a technical field with an interest in social sciences and education. And the people who are able to bring both of those aspects and have had some past experience in it, even if it is taking courses or having uh, more informal work in that area, um, that is very attractive to us. Of course, linking your past experiences and your future goals with research here is very important. Displaying the motivation and persistence to get a PhD anywhere. Only having the passion for it is, is not sufficient because there are people that are serially passionate about things like I really am wildly excited about this for a semester or a year and this is a kind of grueling process so you would want to have some evidence that you know what I'm in it for the long haul. And then all aspects of the application tell a consistent story. So your essays, your transcripts, your letters of recommendation, your test scores, your everything is kind of saying yes, I'm fabulous. And if there are any things that you would want to explain that you think would be, make you not ideal, that perhaps at one point in your life, maybe your academic career was not as exciting as it was later, and there was a little bump in the road, your essay is a place to explain that. Um, we have students who range from people who are getting their undergraduate degree right now to people who have retired from engineering practice.